Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to calculate the collapse load of collapse load for this beam using the kinematic method. Okay, so basically, in this lecture, we will be learning about what is kinematic method and and this type of a problem we already solved using the static equilibrium method. Okay, static equilibrium method is little bit laborious as compared to kinematic method. Okay, so let us come to first the what is kinematic method. Okay. So kinematic method is basically it is based on principle of virtual work. Principle of virtual work. Okay. So kinematic method is basically based on the principle of virtual work. So principle of virtual work says that the total work done, the total work done, the total work done by forces whether it is external or internal in undergoing in undergoing the virtual displacement virtual displacement is zero okay And the, and the displacement and the virtual displacement should be compatible with the constraints. Okay, so in the short, I can write total work done is equals to work done due to external forces plus work done due to internal forces and this value should be equals to zero okay so here we are giving here we will be giving the virtual virtual we will be learning about virtual displacement okay so basically what i want to say is that what i want to say is that so let us suppose we have a very simply supported beam over here okay and the w load is acting at the center right so what is happening is that at the at the start of the collapse the plastic hinge will form at this point this is the this is the location of the plastic hinge okay this will be the location of the plastic hinge right this support is let us suppose a and this support is b okay so what is happening in this is that uh, when you when 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 it is a starting of the collapse so during collapse is during so at the start of the collapse we are giving a virtual displacement of delta at this point okay virtual displacement at of delta at this point right so this virtual displacement this virtual displacement delta will not induce any reaction in this beam Okay, this virtual displacement should not change, should not, uh, will not induce any reaction in this beam. Okay, and this virtual displacement is also, uh, it is applied in this way that the direction of the load should not change. So this delta, this delta should be small, very small. Okay, so direction of load should not change. Okay, so this is a fictitious displacement. So what do you, through the principle, uh, through the principle of virtual work, I can say that this at this point there is a rotation. There is there will be rotation of theta at this point, and there will be rotation of theta at this point. Okay, so uh, corresponding to this, the plastic hinge moment, the plastic moment at this point will look like this. This is m let us suppose and this is also m opposite to this direction of the rotation right now if we use the concept of the principle of virtual work what is external work over here external work and the, and you can see that this virtual displacement is compatible with the constraint at this point the, the, the displacement is zero at this point the displacement is zero okay and here you can see that there is a relative rotation because 
there is a relative rotation because at this point the plastic hinge is formed okay so now if you write the external work due to load the work done due to work external is basically equals to w into delta right internal work is equals to m into theta with minus sign plus m into theta again with minus sign why minus sign because the direction of this m is opposite to this direction of this rotation right so in short i can write uh, if i put this value in this equation i can write w into delta e minus m into theta minus m into theta equals to 0 okay so this equation will become w into theta equals to m into theta plus m into theta okay so generally in books they will give that uh, the principle of virtual work is external external uh, work done is equals to internal work done okay so this is external work done which is equals to internal work done okay so you can write like this work done external is equals to mod of work done internal okay so this is your principle of virtual work this is the external load which is acting at this point okay so the virtual virtual work done will be w into delta okay remember that this delta this delta is an arbitrary is in virtual displacement okay this load is not causing this displacement this we are giving we are giving this displacement as a delta okay right so this is your uh but you can say that principle of virtual work and this deflection this deflection is during is during the collapse is during collapse remember that thing okay so now we will be using this now we will be using this concept in solving this problem okay So now, now in kinematic method, why first of all, let us talk about the static indeterminacy of the structure. Okay. So at this point, at this A, this is, let us suppose this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. Okay. At this A point, the reactions available are the but the reaction will be one moment will be there and one vertical reaction okay horizontal reaction i am neglecting here also one vertical and one moment okay so total number of reactions are four right equilibrium equation will be two so four minus two will be two and remember that this virtual work done method is applicable when the structure is in equilibrium okay i forgot to tell that thing right so virtual work done method virtual work done method for that equilibrium condition is must the structure should be in equilibrium right so now for my uh, the, the static indeterminacy of this structure is basically two so plastic hinge required so plastic hinge required will be number of plastic hinges required for collapse will be two plus one that is three okay because this is a single beam if it, it if it if it was if it it would have if 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 it is an uh what you can say that a continuous beam if this beam uh, is sub let us suppose if you have taken the continuous beam example okay in that the plastic hinge the collapse plastic hinge can be less than three okay due to partial collapse of the structure okay that thing this thing that thing we have already discussed while discussing the static equilibrium method right so what so number of the plastic hinge required is three right so now next step is to find the location of the plastic hinge okay so plastic hinge can form so plastic hinge can form at a b and d so this is one collapse this is collapse mechanism one okay the plastic hinge hinge can form either at this point one at, uh, at this point this point actually the plastic hinge for hinge can form at this point this point c and d okay but we require three plastic hinges for collapse so i am taking the first case the plastic hinge hinges are forming at a b and d point right second collapse will be plastic hinge will form when a c d okay this is 
the collapse mechanism too. Okay, we don't know where the exactly the plastic hinge will form. Okay, so uh, exact uh, we don't know exact collapse mechanism. Okay, so we 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 know that the plastic hinge will form under the point load. There are chances of the plastic hinge hinges are formed under the point load and at the support conditions. Okay, so next case I am taking when the plastic hinge is forming at B, C, and D. Okay. I'm I'm saying that this case one uh, this case we don't generally we don't check but I'm showing you okay in this problem I'm showing you this thing right I'm assuming that the plastic hinge will form at B C and D okay so let us suppose this is collapse three now what we will do so we have decided the collapse mechanisms okay how our beam will collapse. Now after that we will be I am giving the kinematic displacement okay that's why this method is called kinematic displacement where I am giving the delta displacement under this point load and I will calculate the what you can say that the collapse load for this beam okay. So now let us come to the first uh, first collapse uh, first collapse mechanism which is collapse one in which the plastic hinges are formed at A, B and D. Guys, if you solve, to, if you solve, if you want to solve the problem how to calculate the collapse mechanism, if if the in the questions it is not asked to solve it with the static equilibrium method, then you will always use the kinematic method, okay? Because it is very easy to use, right? So uh, now, when the plastic engines are formed at A, B, and D point. This is A, this is B, and this is D. Okay. So if you give the delta displacement, this delta virtual displacement, or you can say that the kinematic displacement of delta, that's why this is called kinematic method because we are giving, we are inducing, we are giving one kinematic displacement at this B point. Okay. So that kinematic displacement is basically, let us suppose, D, delta. Okay. So when you are giving, when you are giving this delta displacement at this point, this point, so it will deflect like this, okay, it should deflect like this, right, and due to deflection, this deflection there, is, there, is, there, is, there, is, there won't be any reaction generated, okay, there won't be, this is a rigid body displacement basically. So at this point the rotation is theta 1 let us suppose, and this point the rotation is theta 2, okay. And alternate due to alternate this angle will be also be theta theta 1 through geometrical properties okay and this also angle is also what you can say that theta 2 okay these are alternate angles right so now the moment the what is the direction of the plastic what will be the direction of the plastic moment that is an important thing okay to resist this rotation there will be a plastic moment of mp over here again the plastic moment mp at this point right mp moment and again one mp moment at this point okay so there is the load is acting at this point is 2w and at this point, let us suppose the load is 3w. Okay. So now the external work done will be 2w into, I am giving one displacement delta at this point, delta, okay. So using the so, uh, using the uh, you can say that the concept of virtual work done method and this structure is in equilibrium. Okay, we cannot we, for the if you we you want to use in virtual equation virtual work done the structure should be in equilibrium. Okay, so now this uh, what you can say that if you apply the principle of virtual work done method over here, I can write total work done equals to two w into delta. Okay, plus 3.5 w into delta 1 
let us suppose under this load the displacement is delta 1 minus mp into theta 1 mp into theta 1 again work done internal work done at this point will be m minus mp into theta 1 similarly for this portion it will be minus mp into theta 2 why negative because direction of rotation and direction of movement are in are in opposite direction okay and at this point again this will be equals to minus mp into theta 2 okay so that value this value should be equals to 0 okay so if you transfer this thing 2.5 2. 2.2 uh, 2w into delta plus 3.5 w into delta 1 should be equals to mp into theta 1 plus mp into theta 1 plus mp into theta 2 plus mp into theta 2 okay so generally in books they mention this thing as internal work done internal work done right so uh, now what we will do over here we will find the relation between We'll find the relation between this delta and this theta 1 and theta 2. Okay. So now okay, this delta I can write this is 2, this is 3, this is 1. This delta I can write 2 into theta 1, okay, through trigonometry, through trigonometric relation, 2 into theta 1 is I can write this displacement delta is equal to 2 into theta 1. Okay. Similarly, what is the relation? Will, what will be the relation between theta 1 and theta 2? So I can write 2 theta 1 is equals to 4 theta 2. Okay. If you calculate this, del this delta from this with the help of this theta 1, it will be 2 theta 1. And if you calculate delta with the help of theta 2, it will be 4 theta 2. Okay. So I can write from here theta 2 is equals to theta 1 by 2 okay this is very very this is a, this is very important okay to develop the relationship between this displacement okay right so now now what now is now the now what is the relation between this delta and this delta 1 okay or you can say that delta 1 i can write delta 1 i can write 1 into theta 2 this delta 1 i can write 1 into theta 2 so theta 2 is theta 1 by 2 so delta 1 will be 1 into theta 1 by 2 so delta 1 is equals to theta 1 by 2 so i have re i have represented all the this displacement in terms of theta 1 okay so i now i'll put the value of theta, delta delta 1 and theta 2 in this equation so i can write 2w into delta what is the value of delta 2 into theta 1 3.5 w into delta 1 what is the value of delta 1 is theta 1 by 2 so 3.5 w into theta 1 by 2 and this should be equals to mp into theta 1 plus mp into theta 1 plus mp into theta 2 what is the relation between theta 1 and theta 2 is equals to this is theta 1 by 2 this is mp into theta 1 by 2 okay so uh, this theta 1 theta 1 will cancel from either side okay so now this value will become this is 4 w plus 3.5 w by 2 this is equals to 2 this will be equals to 3 mp okay so i can write so mp value is given mp is 120 kilo newton meter okay so mp is 1 kilo, 120 kilo newton meter so the value will be 3 into 120 divided by 4 plus 3.5 divided by 2 so this value is coming out to be 
जीरो एट किलो न्यूटन ओके सो द कोलैप्स लोड सो द कोलैप्स लोड फ्रॉम दिस वेन वी आर कंसिडरिंग दिस मैकेजम वेर द प्लास्टिक इंजेज आर फॉर्म अंडर दिस ए बी एंड डी इट इज नथिंग बट इट इज सिक्सटी टू किलो न्यूटन ओके सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट केस ओके नाउ विल बी टेकिंग द कोलैप्स मैकेनिज्म टू now the collapse is now we are we are assuming that collapse is is taking the plastic hinges are forming under this under these points a at this point a c d a c and d okay when the plastic hinges are formed at a and c a c d this is c point this is d point a the deflection diagram during the collapse will look uh, the deflection diagram when you give the virtual displacement will look like this okay we are giving the virtual displacement of delta this is fixed support at this point this is fixed at this point the load is acting 3.5 w and this point the load is acting 2 this distance is 2 this is 3 this is 1 right again again the plastic hinge the at this point the rotation is theta 1 theta 2 okay you can see that this virtual displacement is kinematically uh, this this virtual displacement is admissible compatible with the, with the, with the constraint okay here you can see that the deflection is zero at this end support so at this point the direction of the moment is mp here the again the direction of moment is mp the rotation is in this direction this is let us suppose theta 1 here the rotation is in this direction this is theta 2 okay mp direction here will look like this here the mp direction will look like this okay so if you use if you and the, here the virtual displacement is delta virtual displacement is delta then this displacement displacement is very very small okay now if you apply the concept of virtual work done method over here which is external work done external work done is equals to mod internal work done okay so if you if you apply this equation over if you use this equation and put the value in this uh, in this in this in this statement okay so i can write with the help of this virtual work done i can write let us suppose this is delta 1 this is delta i can write 2w into delta external virtual work work done plus 3.5 this is delta 1 into delta 3.5 3.5 w into delta it will be equals to internal work internal virtual work done at this point will be mp into theta 1 i am not taking the negative sign because i have shifted this uh, actually the virtual work done method is is basically external virtual work plus internal virtual work is equals to 0 okay so that's why i am not considering negative sign over here okay because i already put mod at this point okay so mo mod at this uh, right hand side so here also the moment the vir virtual work done at this point will be mp into theta 1 plus mp into theta 2 right and at this point the virtual work done is mp into theta 2 okay so now you need to find the relation between again this delta delta 1 and theta 1 and theta 2 okay so this uh, delta 
so this uh, delta if you calculate delta from this side this this side i can write 4 theta 1 is equals to delta okay and if you calculate delta from this side i can write delta is equals to theta 2 into 1 okay so both these deltas are equal so 4 theta 1 should be equals to theta 2 so one relation we got is that theta 2 is equals to 4 times of theta 1 okay now in the next case what is the relation between this uh, delta what you can say that delta 1 and theta 1 so delta 1 i can write delta 1 will be equals to twice into theta 1 okay and this delta between this and what is the relation between this theta 1 and theta 2 this you can write again this we have already found okay so i'll i will be putting this value in this equation so 2w into delta 1 what is the value of delta 1 2 theta 1 plus 3.5 w into delta what is the value of delta what is the value of delta delta is delta is 4 theta 1 mp into twice theta 1 plus uh, mp into twice theta 2 okay so uh, this theta 2 what is the relation between theta 1 and theta 2 is this is mp into 2 into 4 theta 1 okay so this is not 4 theta 1 this should be delta should be 5 theta 1 this should be 5 theta 1 okay so this is 5 theta 1 okay so now you have uh, we have found this uh, what you can say that this is mp into 2 theta 1 plus mp into theta 2 so this is again theta 2 into 5 theta 1 okay so theta 1 theta 1 will cancel out each other so uh, this side of equation will become this is 2 mp here from 10 mp plus 10 mp and this is 22 mp and this is 4 and this this value is 5 basically so this is 5 into 3.5 plus 4 this is 21.5 w equals to 22 mp so 22 into 120 divided by 21.5 so this value i think i made a mistake at this some point so this is mp into theta 1 mp into theta 1 plus mp into theta 2 plus mp into theta 2 okay so 2w into delta and delta is 5 theta 1 2w into 2 theta okay so this is 5 theta 1 mp into 2 theta theta 1 plus mp into theta okay okay so this is mp into 2 theta this is this value i have, I have written that this expression i have written to i have written to twice so this is this should be mp into 2 2 theta okay 2 theta 2 so the, theta 2 is 5 theta 1 right so this value will become this is 2 this is 12 mp i think this is 12 mp equals to 4 plus 3.5 into 5 this is 21.5 w okay so 12 into 120 divided by 21.5 so this value w comes out to be 66.976 okay for the collapse load when you are assuming that plastic hinges are formed at a c d and d is 66.97 okay right so uh, we have calculated the collapse one and collapse two now we will be calculating the collapse three 
Now we will be calculating the collapse load when the plastic hinges are forming under this uh, at this BCD and BCD point. Okay, so this is our fixed beam. So uh, plastic hinges are formed forming at this B point, the C point, and this D point. Okay, and we we need to calculate what will be the collapse load for this case. Okay, so now I will give the virtual displacement under this point load. Okay, no, under not under this point load, basically at this C point. Okay, so when you are giving the virtual displacement at this C point, okay, so it will deflect like this. Okay, the collapse will look like this, and this is basically the rigid body movement. The rigid body movement. Okay, no internal reactions are generated due to this. Okay, so when you are giving this delta deflection at this point, this is theta one. Let us suppose this is theta two. This distance is three. This is one. Here the direction of the MP will look like this. At this point, here this is MP, and at these points it will be MP like this, and again MP opposite to this rotation. One load is acting 3.5 W, and here this load is 2 W. Okay. Now we'll you we will be using the concept of the virtual work work done method. Okay. And again, the concept of virtual work done method says that the internal external work done external work done will be equal to mod of internal work done. Why I kept this sign? We have already discussed. Okay. So now, and this movement is basically during the collapse. Okay. What I meant by that is that if let us suppose you have one simply supported beam. Okay. And you are applying a load W at this point. This beam will deflect like this, and now again after the formation of the first plastic hinge, this beam will deflect like this. Here, the first plastic hinge is formed. Now, if you apply the virtual displacement, virtual displacement of delta, again this beam will deflect like this. Okay, these two curvatures, these two curvatures will be same. Curvature will be same. so no internal reactions are generated right so i am talking about the displacement between these two stages between these two stages this is our delta value okay so during the collapse during the collapse how this beam is deflected that is dip, shown over here okay i have shown you the example of simply supported beam but i just want to show this deflection diagram shows is showing the de deflection between these two stages this this is the between start of the collapse and after the application of the virtual displacement okay now if you put the value of in this in this formula in this equation basically so i can write mp into theta 1 at this point okay this is internal work done so basically i uh, basically i am keeping the mod so i am not keeping the sign okay plus mp into theta 1 again at this point plus mp into theta 2 Plus MP into theta two, and this will be equals to three point five W into delta. At this point, the deflection is zero, so that delta is zero. So that's why this the work done due to this force will not come. Okay. So what is the relation between theta one and theta two and delta? We need to find. So delta I can write. Delta will be equals to three theta one, and this is this will be also equals to. Theta two, okay, through trigonometry. So theta one, so theta two is equals to theta one by three, right? And again, so this theta one should be equals to three theta. This three theta one should be equals to one theta two. Okay, 
so this theta 2 where this theta 2 is basically 3 theta 1 okay so now and this delta is equals to 3 theta 1 okay putting this value into the, in this equation will give us mp into theta 1 plus mp into theta 1 plus mp into 3 theta 1 plus mp into 3 theta 1 is equals to 3.5 w into w into delta the value of delta is theta 2 not theta 2 3 theta 1 okay so theta 1 theta 1 will cancel out each other so the final value of the collapse load will be this is 6 8 mp will be equals to 3.5 w into 3 okay so 8 into 120 divided by 3.5 into 3 so this value comes out to be 91.428 okay so the collapse load when the when you are considering the plastic hinges, the hinges are formed at bcd is equals to 91.428 okay so we have three collapse load what to choose so collapse load will be minimum of these three values okay minimum of these three values will that load will result in the collapse so actually the collapse load will be will be equals to 62.608 okay now we have to check whether it is true collapse load or not true collapse load we have to check okay so for the true collapse load we need to satisfy the yield condition also okay so when you are for when the plastic hinges are forming at a b d under the at a b and d so this is b and this is d so here this load is 2.5 into 62.608 so this value is or you can say that 2.5 into 62.61 so this value is 150 sorry this is 2w now 62.608 into 2 so this value is 125.216 okay and this load is equal be equals to 3.5 into 62.608 so this is 219.2 one one two eight kilonewton okay now at and the plastic hinges are formed at this point this is mp and again the plastic hinges are formed at this again at this mp here also the plastic hinge formation is there okay now we need to check the yield condition so if you draw the bending moment diagram how it will look like at this point there is the formation of plastic hinge so bending moment this is hogging moment so it will start below this axis and at this point the moment is this point the moment the moment is sagging the moment is sagging so it will be the, the it will be positive over here this value is 120 this value is 120 and here also the moment is negative so it will start at this point it will start below this axis so this is 120 okay so under this load we have to check what is what will be the value of moment okay so if this value is less than 120 then our yield condition will also be satisfied right then how to calculate this thing again this is very simple so what you need to do is over here is that we will be calculating moment at this point okay i will be using the equation summation m equals to 0 for a so if you put summation m equals to 0 at a i can write rb into 6 minus 219.128 into 5 minus 125.216 into 2 okay equals to 0 this mp will this mp will cancel out each other 
So what will what is the value of RB from here? So 219.128 into 5 plus 125.216 into 2 divided by 6. So RB comes out to be 224.34 and the moment at this point will be moment at this point will be let us suppose MC will be 224.34 into 1 minus of 120 okay so so this the moment at this under this point load is 104.34 okay so this is your bending moment diagram during the collapse Okay, and you can see that the yield condition is also satisfied. This yield condition is also satisfied. So this is our true collapse load. Equilibrium condition is also there. Mechanism condition is also there and yield condition is also there. Okay, so this is our true collapse load. Okay, if an, if an objective, someone asks you what is the true collapse, what is the collapse load, then you will simply write the minimum of these three values. You don't need to check the true collapse load. Okay. okay? So guys, uh, if you have any doubt in this problem, you can write in the comment section. Okay, so thank you very much. We'll meet in the next lecture.